Hello, uh, welcome to another edition of the Planet M Landing Zone Mobility Meetup, uh, our continuing virtual version of this event. Um, we're coming to you at a special, uh, special time, uh, a lunch session, or if you're like me, uh, your third cold brew coffee of the day. Um, so I hope everybody can grab a coffee, grab some food, um, grab some lunch. We've got a great uh, event in, in store for you. So first things first, if this is your first mobility meetup, my name is Devin O'Reilly. I'm the Director of Entrepreneurship and Mobility Initiative at the Detroit Regional Chamber. Um, and I'm also um, a, uh, a partner along with the, with the Chamber in the, uh, the Planet M Landing Zone, which is actually where I'm at today. So normally, uh, pre-pandemic, we would hold these, hold these mobility meetings at the Planet M Landing Zone. Obviously, they've gone virtual uh, since then, but I'm here. Um, and just to tell you a little bit about the Planet M Landing Zone. So this is a, this is a space in downtown Detroit um, on the fourth floor of the Weaverk Building in downtown. And it's designed to be a physical space for the world's best mobility companies to come here, to work together, to connect with the greater automotive ecosystem and mobility ecosystem here in Detroit. And so to date, we have over 40 startups and 20 corporate partners who are part of this Planet M landing zone and to not only use the space, but also benefit from the connections, the introductions, the events like this that we curate and put on to make this a real active startup community. The goal is to grow the startup community here in, uh, here in Detroit and in the region. And so along with Planet M, the MEDC, the Detroit Regional Chamber, and Mish Auto. Um, that's what we're that's what we're trying to do here. So um, a mobility meetup is really kind of an opportunity um, for the, the 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 people that really want to be in the room. So startups, corporates from the mobility sector, from the technology sector, uh, and venture capital to all get in the same room, whether that be virtual or physical and talk to each other and hear about what's going on and hear from experts in the, in the industry. It's also an opportunity to connect with each other. And I'll talk a little bit about how we're gonna do that later. So let's walk through the run of show um, so you kind of know what to expect for today. Um, in, a few, in a few minutes, I'm going to introduce my colleague, Catherine Snorson from Planet M. Um, she's gonna talk a little bit about uh, Planet M itself and then also introduce our featured speaker, um, Ruben Sarkar, who is the CEO uh, and president of the American Center for Mobility. And so we're gonna have a really good discussion with Ruben. Uh, you'll be able to ask questions. So as a participant, you have a question uh, tab on the side. You should have a question tab on the side of your screen. You can ask questions right in there um, of, of Ruben and we'll make sure that they get asked and I'll make sure that they get put to, put to the group. After the audience Q&A, um, we'll go into a networking uh, session so another feature that I wanna point out now is the hand raise feature. So on the, the right side of your screen, you'll uh, see a little tab where you can raise your hand and that gives you the ability uh, to um, kind of go to the top of the line, we'll call on you um, and you can kind of introduce yourself, tell us who you are, tell us where, you know, what company you work at um, and what you're working, what technology, um, who you're looking to connect with. It's basically an opportunity to do some networking, even though we're, we're virtual. Um, and so you'll have an opportunity. So that feature will be kind of enabled once we get to that portion. And I hope that, I hope that we have some individuals who are new to this and they're ready to tell us all about who they are and hopefully connect better with us. Uh, and then finally, we're gonna bring on uh, Len from Connect Space, and he's gonna talk a little bit about um, an additional app that we have, a meetup app, that will allow us to continue this conversation and continue the networking beyond just this just this meetup. So it's a really cool way to kind of continue continue making connections, continue the conversations that we have here today. Um, and so without further ado, um, let me introduce my colleague at Planet M and my friend here at the Landing Zone, Catherine Snorrison. Catherine, good to see you. Hi, Doug. Good to see you, too, virtually again. Absolutely. So take it away. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Catherine Snorrison. Uh, just like Devin said, I'm a director at Planet M. 
Uh, so I want to give a brief overview of Planetam, and then I'll introduce our featured speaker. Um, so Planetam is the state of Michigan's mobility initiative. And it's actually part of the Office of Future Mobility and Electrification. Uh, so some of you might have seen that the governor signed uh, two executive orders back in February, creating the Office of Future Mobility and Electrification, and also the Council on Future Mobility and Electrification. Uh, and both of those were launched publicly at the beginning of July. Uh, so excited to be part of the team, part of the office, um, and we are coordinating across many different state agencies. Um, MEDC being one of them, LEO, EGLE, and MDOT. Um, and you can learn a little bit more about PlanetM and the Office of Future Mobility and Electrification on the PlanetM website. Um, and there's also an option to contact us if you have any questions. Um, but together as a group, our vision is for a stronger state economy and safer, more equitable, environmentally conscious transportation for all Michigan residents. Uh, and we focus on two big buckets of work, one being strategic policy and one being dynamic programming. So we'd love to talk to anyone on the call more about those uh, two big buckets of work and how you can get plugged in. But like I said, please visit the plan and website to learn more and to get in touch with us. Uh, so without further ado, I want to introduce Ruben Sarkar, the president and CEO of the American Center for Mobility, um, ACM. And Ruben is a native Michigander, uh, and he started his career at General Motors for 10 years um, and, and moved around a bit, but also um, led at the Department of Energy, uh, overseeing the sustainable transportation sector and actually building a mobility program there. So uh, without further ado, if Ruben, you can join me on the screen and you can tell us a little bit about uh, ACM. Is it a different format for us at the mobility meetup? Uh, Ruben's going to present to you some slides and, and, and a video for about 10 minutes, and then um, we'll have a Q&A, the two of us, and then there'll be the chance for the audience to ask questions, and, and Devin will moderate that. So, Ruben, take it away. Uh, yeah, hey, Catherine, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to come speak with you um, at the Planet M Mobility Meetup. I've attended a few of these just to listen in. I think it's a really great forum. Um, just to add a little bit more to my background, um, I've been in the transportation innovation space for a little more than 20 years, um, working uh, in the corporate OEM space, as well as in the large applied government research space, but uh, spent a number of years in startup companies and now moved over into ACM, which is a not-for-profit. But the common theme with all of it has been transportation innovation, the next generation technologies and policies and modes to get people and goods around. So very excited to join ACM, been here for about four months. Um, if you could jump to the next slide. Um, you know, many of you may be familiar with the traditional automotive proving ground, uh, the type of test track uh, that tests the durability, the ride, the handling, the dynamics, the mechanical, physical paces of a vehicle. Um, you know, many automotive companies have these kinds of facilities. ACM represents that next generation test facility. It's a smart mobility test center. Uh, and it's really focused on, you know, validating and measuring the sensing and situational awareness or the brains of the vehicle, uh, in addition to providing physical roads and tracks. And so it's it's a new type of proving ground for, for validating connected and automated vehicles. Next slide. Uh, we were primarily built around three pillars for uh, testing or technology development, which includes research uh, and development, testing and validation for products. Uh, standardization, accelerating the standards that decision makers can use in regulatory environments around how to deploy these technologies safely. Uh, and then education and workforce development, trying to develop that next generation workforce and to, to see that they stay here uh, in the state of Michigan. Uh, and then in addition to these three pillars for technology development, we complement them with business development. Companies that want to come to ACM to showcase their products, uh, to get them in front of other companies and to really um, kind of create an ecosystem um, for testing, but also development of new new business ideas. Next slide. Uh, mobility is not just one industry anymore. It's no longer just automotive. It's a convergence of industries. And it's hard to say these days who is not involved in mobility. And so our customer base and our initiatives span the automotive space, but they also get into areas like cybersecurity, cloud services, insurance, the whole gambit. Uh, are areas that we consider, um, you know, opportune areas for ACM to be engaged with and for uh, companies to self-identify 
and see what can be done uh, for their businesses at ACM. Next slide. And so, I, you know, given the amount of time, I thought it would be best to kind of just show you a video of ACM. I'll talk you a little bit through some of the features here, uh, and it'll give you a good sense of, you know, what's involved in a 500-acre test facility um, like ACM. So if you could just go to the next slide, we'll play just a short video. And this may come across a little choppy on your screen, so just kind of look at it for the imagery here. But, you know, ACM represents a real-world testing environment. It's got real world roads, uh, the kinds of roads that you will see in Michigan and across the country. Um, we have high speed highway loops that can do um, you know, uh, high speed testing, but also allow you to do merging uh, on and off ramps using connected and automated technologies. We have you know, triple overpasses that actually bring in real traffic from the highways so you can check the interference of, of signals between cars and, and what happens when you're in, you know, trying to measure in the vertical axis, not just in the you know, what's in front of you. Um, tunnels uh, that can be used for testing of infotainment or other, you know, connectivity, uh, and then smart intersections uh, and other communications infrastructure uh, that allow you to have, you know, vehicle to infrastructure communication in addition to, you know, validating the sensors that are on vehicles. It's a very configurable environment. You know, we have an urban canyon. We can stack uh, up different containers to uh, can kind of simulate what it's like to drive through an urban environment. Uh, and use a lot of the different kinds of equipment uh, that enable people to test um, their sensing uh, capabilities and vehicle controls safely uh, without actually injuring passengers or having to, you know, do crash, you know, physical crashes with other vehicles. Uh, and then we also look at developing off-road environments um, and providing, in some cases, real-world roads where we have not fixed anything. We've intentionally left the potholes in the road and, and the faded lines and the cracks. Uh, because those are the kinds of things that your cars are going to have to you know measure and experience when they're out um, validating different technologies uh, we have office space conference rooms uh, and a number of garages for people to come physically locate on site and to to do work next slide so i you know i briefly talked about this already with the video so i won't spend much time on this but this just gives you kind of the the top-down overview of the 500 acre test facility we have a number of defined test environments uh, inside the, the two and a half mile loop you saw, and then a number of areas that we are we can define based on the user needs uh, and that have future plans to build out, for example, rural environments where the road conditions are very different. These all represent areas that we can do evaluations on at ACM. Next slide. I think you can skip this one because we talked about it already. Um, I covered this a little bit in the video, but uh, you know, in addition to the physical road infrastructure, we have an uh, intelligent transportation network, um, DSRC systems deployed across the facility, um, fiber optics and a 5G network coming in, and then all of the equipment and robotic solutions that people need to um, you know, develop a test protocol on the track, uh, use the appropriate robotics and to automate their vehicles and to evaluate their, um, their technologies. Next slide. Uh, people come to us in addition for testing for events. Um, and in fact, uh, just prior to COVID, we saw a significant increase in the number of people wanting to come out to, uh, to ACM just to do events, to set up various test environments and to showcase their products and services. And so we believe that uh, in short order, as soon as we're able to, um, we're gonna see a rebound in the number of people coming to ACM just for that purpose. We started a event center uh, we paused that um, uh, with the structures up, but just waiting for uh, you know COVID to, to be addressed. And we think that this is actually going to be a, a, a substantial amount of the activity that takes place over at ACM. Next slide. Um, I often get asked the question, you know, if you can test on the public roads or you can test in the simulation environment, why do you need a controlled track? And, and the reality is you do need all three. Uh, on-road testing gets you the most naturalistic data, puts you right on the road with all the random things you'll run into. But again, you're going to run into random things potentially unprepared, and it takes billions of miles of on-road driving uh, to safely validate a car. Uh, when you go to the simulation environment, tools are coming along uh, quite nicely, but they're still not entirely validated. They don't represent all of the real-world conditions. And so a track uh, uh, complements that by allowing you to do work in the simulation space uh, inform that with data from on-road testing and then do controlled track testing 
um, uh, to get the best, most targeted data from your validation effort. So, you know, we see there's a virtual cycle of the virtual and physical, uh, and ACM actually participates in the tool chain kit for simulation alongside the controlled track testing, uh, and are also partnering on on-road demonstrations as well. Next slide. Uh, and so just another example of the digital world, you know, we have a digital twin that's been created of ACM. Uh, you can um, access this, do, uh, you know, iterations, thousands of simulations before you want to come to ACM. So you can pick the exact test you want to run. But again, we participate both in the virtual space uh, as well as in the physical space for testing. Next slide. Cybersecurity is another area of interest. Obviously, you have many uh, vectors uh, in a connected and automated vehicle system that people can use to, to, to um, have security breaches. And so we are actively developing our cybersecurity capabilities through partnerships. We have Grim located on site. Uh, and while they're doing their, um, their um, research on site for their own purposes, they've made available access to their um, car hacking workbench to other customers. Uh, and are partnering with ACM in another, uh, a number of other ways to, to try to forward uh, the area of cybersecurity research. Next slide. Um, we, we, are, we do a, a quite a bit of federally funded research at ACM. Uh, and while ACM was originally envisioned to be more of a compliance and certification and product validation facility, um, we have received and are part of, you know, more than $20 million worth of federally uh, awarded research um, for partnerships uh, that are doing work in the connected and automated space. Uh, we have ongoing research in the area of truck platooning, uh, and I'd just like to highlight that because we can do Class 8 vehicles at full GVW, uh, and that's a unique feature to have a track that has real roads, high-speed environments, uh, full capabilities. They're built to MDOT specs. Uh, we're also validating a number of models that were developed and algorithms that were developed through DOE by our national labs to improve the fuel efficiency of connected and automated vehicles. And so we have an ongoing program with DOE um, to um, automate vehicles and to validate, you know, uh, algorithms that improve uh, merging of traffic, speed harmonization, uh, as well as intersection management. Uh, and then you're going to see a number of programs that we're a part of that actually involve uh, driving systems demonstrations or automated vehicle demonstrations on roads. The one mentioned here is with the city of Detroit. You may have seen we were also mentioned in the SIP CAVNU award that recently went out as well. Next slide. Um, I mentioned earlier the need for standards. You know, when is a vehicle safe enough to get on the public roads? How do people know that they're safe? And so to get the standards, we've developed our own standards committees that are advising and providing input into the main standard setting bodies that are then gonna be used to set the regulations. And so having a test environment and the access to our industry experts um, helps accelerate that effort, get to standard tests, which many of which could be run at ACM, um, you know, once they're released. Next slide. Uh, and then in the area of education and workforce development, uh, I'm, I'm summarizing here just in a short order, but you know, really we have a, a, a number of areas that we're exploring uh, to see how ACM can uh, uh, accelerate educational efforts for the next generation workforce uh, in the state of Michigan. So we have a large academic consortium that we're working with. We recently released a report on middle skills for connected and automated vehicles in partnership with the University of Michigan. Uh, and we're continuing to explore different ways that ACM can help provide uh, or be part of an ecosystem for educating that next generation uh, workforce um, and keeping Michigan kind of at the epicenter of, of the automotive and mobility industry. And I believe I've got one more. Yeah, and so, you know, this is the vision um, uh, for ACM. It's not just to be a test track uh, or another proving ground. Uh, it is to be an ecosystem that brings companies together um, alongside a smart mobility test center that uh, works both in the virtual and the physical space and has our partners anchor on site. And so part of the space in our 500 acres has been set aside for build out of a technology park. Um, we had the roads put in, we we're in the process of looking for developers. Uh, and that also includes the potential to bring large anchor um, like corporate partners onto the site as well as be a place where startup companies can co-locate here at ACM. And so that, that's ultimately the grand vision is, is this ecosystem. Uh, and with that, I think I will conclude my presentation. Thank you.
Perfect. Thank you so much, Ruben. Um, I've heard you present before, and I learn something new every single time. And it's great to have such a strong mobility asset like ACM in Michigan. Uh, so I'll start off with just a few questions and then open it up to the audience. And Devin will be moder um, looking at those questions coming in. Uh, so please, everyone on the line, uh, if you have a question, please submit it over the chat feature, and Devin will get to your question. Uh, but to start us off, um, Ruben, you started your career in Michigan and then worked in D.C. and Denver. What was it about this role specifically that brought you back to the state of Michigan? Yeah, there's a phrase, once a Michigander, always a Michigander. And if you that. have to leave Michigan for a while, you realize why that, that phrase matters. There's there's a lot to love about Michigan. I mean, just the state, the waters, the, the natural beauty. And uh, Midwest is just a friendly place to be. You know, I still got a lot of friends and family here in the, in the area. So, you know, I started in Michigan. I actually started my job at the Willow Run facility before it was ACM. So I had roots tied to the facility. Um, many people might be aware or not aware, but, you know, way back when it was a GM plant, then it was a Ford plant before that. It used to build B-24 bombers uh, down a one-mile plant, and it built one bomber an hour uh, that mm -hmm. went to the Willow One Airport and took off to support the World War II effort. So there was a lot of history uh, steeped in the ACM space, and I really enjoyed working here 20 years ago. So I always kind of made a blast of it. And then when I was at the Department of Energy, um, we were aware of the efforts in Michigan to launch ACM. So I knew the first, you know, the initial founding members of ACM and the vision that the state of Michigan had around it. So I spent 10 years, you know, traveled through various startup environments, did my bit in DC, had a lot of fun. Um, and But when I noticed that the opportunity might be there to come back to, to Michigan to be part of ACM, um, you know, I just jumped at the chance. One, because I never, you know, 20 years ago, I thought I would still be living right in the same area. Um, yeah. and, um, <laughs> I, I really enjoy working in, you know, advancing the movement of people and goods with all of the mm -hmm. next generation technologies. I had built out DOE's mobility program. A lot of that research is now being done at ACM, so that I can see the effect of that. Uh, and so that's when the move to come back is Michigan, the epicenter of mobility, and it's just a great ecosystem uh, and has lots of talented engineers and a lot of promise for the future to keep being the leader in mobility. So I, I said, let's, uh, let's get back. That's great. I'm glad you kept your ear to the ground, you know, listening to what's happening in Michigan, and then you eventually moved back here. So it's great to have you as part of the ecosystem. Um, and then, you know, I know you're only four months into your time at ACM, but let's brag about what were the successes that ACM has had since opening? Um, you know, some of them were before your time, but I'd love for you to kind of focus on that. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things I can't say that are in development that we hope you'll keep hearing sure. a drumbeat of announcements that will be coming. And I think that's one of our focuses is really to, to transition to the output of ACM. The first, you know, couple of years was focused on infrastructure build out, right? So yep. building the facility, building the garages, getting everything ready. And so there was a small period of time where there wasn't, uh, there was a, a lull in the activity as people were getting their plans together. Uh, and then at the start of the year, we started seeing a, a heavy amount of activity from the auto OEMs coming in, our partners, you know, spending time on the track. And we briefly took a pause due to, to COVID uh, because uh, of the close down of the track. However, um, you know, since resuming, I mean, just to highlight a few of the activities that we have ongoing here, um, I mentioned that we're part of two large Department of Energy grants where we have um, a, a large-scale deployment or program around uh, uh, validating the most advanced algorithms that have come mm -hmm. out of the labs um, for fuel economy, uh, and you know, that's working with some of the most sophisticated you know, entities or research organizations out there and then taking what they've invented and then showing how that would be implemented into a vehicle, measuring the benefits. Yeah. Um, we, we have the DOE truck platooning programs that I mentioned, um, yeah. automated driving demonstrations, and then recently we were uh, we were awarded the, the, the part of the CAVNU grant. So on the grant front, there's a lot, of, and there's things I can't mention, there's probably three other DOE grants that were awarded this year that we will be a part of um, later this fall. So a, a heavy amount of research pipeline coming over yeah. to the um, um, uh, a, a lot of our customer programs are confidential because that's one sure. of the elements of ACM. People come here, they're given privacy on the track, uh, and you know, without their permission, we sometimes don't even know what they're doing. We don't even go into their garages. Uh, and so, um, you know, I can't always tell you what's happening from a success level of who's doing what. I can tell you that there is a considerable amount of activity here that's ongoing with our partners who are 
embedding further and moving more people onto the facility, ramping up their efforts going forward. Um, we are, I mentioned, in the process of launching our tool chain kit initiative, and that's not the name of it, but it describes all of the pieces from the data, the modeling and simulation, the algorithm development, all the way into the simulation and right? We are standing up a series of partnerships that will integrate that and provide a unique offering through ACM that we don't yeah. think is really available through a number of other facilities. Uh, and right. will we'll allow people to come to ACM and truly use it as a product development resource versus yeah. just a test track that they can come and, and do their testing on. Um, yeah. And, and you know, I'll pause here in a second, uh, but um, there's a number of what I'll call announceables and things that we're just on the cusp of doing uh, and are just waiting for you know the the signatures to be made and uh, the, the ink to dry. But sure. hopefully all we'll be able to announce some very large new additions to our partnership uh, in some areas that are non-traditional um, to ACM. And, yeah. and that, that's something that we, we want people to know is that um, a lot of companies will self-identify and say, hey, I can see myself doing something at ACM that we didn't even envision. And so right. trying to make this a little turn this around a little bit to say, you know, this is an open slate as long as it doesn't interfere with the mission of connected and automated vehicles. We are looking sure. at working electrification, wireless charging, things that our our stakeholders have asked us to put here that are you know complementary to having a facility that does all of the connected and automated vehicle work. Sure, and I think your examples are so powerful to show that ACM is much more than just a test track. Everything from the toolkit to being open to other ideas of how to use ACM as long as it aligns with the, with the vision and mission. Um, I think that's really exciting. And I like thinking about, you know, I dream about the day when I can be in a fully autonomous vehicle, and those technologies are probably being tested right now at sites like yours. So even though we don't know all the ins and outs, we know innovation's happening. Um, and then my next question is around, you know, Michigan has a lot of great assets for mobility companies, uh, ACM being one of them. How does ACM fit into the overall ecosystem that we have going on here in Michigan? Because I think some, sometimes people hear about things uh, individually, maybe they hear about M-City or ACM. So how, how do you work with the other test sites and, and how do you fit into the overall ecosystem that's happening here in Michigan? Yeah, you know, we often get asked this question, you know, specifically with regards to M-City because we both offer um, a, a track so to speak, a smart mobility test center. Um, and these are, you know, this is how you know, U of M has described it to me in their own words, right? They are here to produce students, right? Yeah. And, and research, right? So that's, there, there's a very specific purpose why people go to M-City uh, is to, to, to produce students and to uh, put out research. And then ACM was conceived as a larger facility um, to do compliant certification and uh, mm -hmm. And people go to both facilities to do various types of work. Uh, but really that distinction is that uh, uh, U of M is always focused on the, 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 the academic and research side of things. We do see technologies developed at, at University of Michigan and are actively in the process of transferring those technologies to ACM through a partnership that says what gets developed through research gets deployed through ACM and then we make those available to the automotive companies and others to use as a way of getting that technology out into the marketplace. So we have a, a good relationship yeah. with M-City, we work closely together. Why ACM is an asset is, is very simple. Uh, you know, it's it, having your own proving ground in a large test facility is no small endeavor, right? And so even for large automotive companies to take their existing track and to retool them and to put in all of the capabilities and to have that solely for your own purpose uh, may, may not be uh, 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 as achievable, especially when you have to put all these dollars into engineering itself, right? So mm -hmm. it just sense to have a shared resource where yep. we can see in the best technologies not duplicate it in five different areas and right. people can buy their time on the track and then you put your dollars into what you really need to put them into which is your development dollars and the physical assets are here so i think that that's a really great uh, reason why hcm is such a, a good public private partnership because it takes you know contributions from the state and the autos puts it into a, into a shared resource uh, and then the regional advantage is, is really large. There's a lot of test tracks around the country and, you know, um, some offering unique capabilities, but really you have to ship your engineers all over the place. You have to ship your vehicle assets. And, you know, just traveling now in the time of COVID is hard enough itself. But right. a lot of people have told us, you know, 
you know, if I'm going to come to your track for reason A, if you can give me two or three other tests I can run, it really it really consolidates uh, the, the focus on, on doing work in Michigan versus having to go to a lot of other different facilities. So, and then the last thing I'll mention is that ACM is not just for end users, right? A lot of people think it's a, for, to be an OEM and to be testing on the track, that's really what ACM is for. Uh, it's also to be a business development resource for you. So if your company is entering into the mobility space, as many are, and you don't have the traditional avenues to get in front of auto companies, um, you know, we provide a business development ecosystem where you can showcase your products, you can make yep. partnerships with us to make your technologies available. And mm -hmm. Our strategy to grow is through partnerships. So keep, we keep adding new vendors to our list of available resources here. And, yep. and so it's, it's meant to be uh, that ecosystem that enriches what the end users get from testing, but that those trying to sell, you know, in the tiered supply chain, their technologies, they have an yeah. avenue to get that in front of people. That's great. It really is a network effect. Once you are partnered with someone like ACM, you know, you, your network just continues to grow in the state with mobility players. Yeah, that's great. I know you're only four months in, but the big question, you know, what's next for ACM? What does the next year look like for you guys? What are some of the big plans? Yeah, um, uh, you know we're very uh, we're optimistic that that uh, things are starting to pick up again. Um, yep. So you know there's a little you know there's always a little bit of delay to due to the the near term reduced spending from COVID. But you know we saw a strong start to the year and we, we still see a, a lot of activity going on. So we're we're optimistic mm -hmm. about the, that. So our our focus is really a, a fewfold. One is you know improve utilization of the track. Just yeah. the track is getting more and more people onto the track into the different test environments. Um, and just making the most out of the investments that we've made today. Um, yep. The second piece is evaluating the new capabilities that we might add to the track. Because as I mentioned earlier, now that people come here for one purpose, we've gotten requests, that, can we add other kinds of testing features? Um, yep. so we have a committee we've stood up that also takes input from our advisory board and will define what other test features and things we'll add into the track. And that may go beyond connected and automated vehicles. It may open mm -hmm. up um, electrification testing. It may open up um, other kinds of connectivity work that's not related to the driving of the vehicle. So yep. we're receptive to, to adding in and layering in those new capabilities. Um, and then, as I mentioned, you know, our growth is through partnerships. So the way we want to grow is not to scale ACM as an entity. It is to keep adding in more and more partners uh, yep. and then their services, their market understanding, their technologies into the ecosystem, uh, and that ACM benefits by just having more ecosystem there and, and participating in that in that value. And one example of that is um, I mentioned the fuel chain kit, uh, but uh, our goal is not to be not to view modeling and simulation as as a competitive uh, element to the validation process, but as one that complements us and one that mm -hmm. we want. Have a, a strength through partnerships uh, and also through some purposeful integration. So we think that we're going to have a turnkey best in class tool chain that people can use alongside of our test track that really, you know, makes one ACM mile worth, you know, thousands of miles on the road. And that's kind of the message we give to people is, you know, we're going to help you save money on your product development. We're going to help you accelerate it. And it's more than just a physical track. It's a, you know, right development resource right. so that's the resource is really to drive that that narrative and to get those things stood up uh in turn key yeah well exciting year ahead uh last question for me before i hand it over to devin is you know we have a lot of people on the line who want to figure out how they can get engaged with acm uh, you'll hear from some of them a little bit later through the raise your hand feature um, but we also have some people who are joining us internationally uh, because we do have uh, seven MOUs with other countries that are focused on mobility. So we do a lot of work internationally as at MEDC. Um, and so how can companies engage with ACM? And then for our international partners and people who aren't here in Michigan, uh, how can they engage with ACM virtually? Because you did mention that physical element, but also that virtual element at ACM. Yeah, I, th I think there's a, a few things, and I'll maybe just comment that, you know, there are also international tracks too. And in some cases, we don't we don't view ourselves as competing with them because there needs to be regional focus, right? You're not going to always want to ship a technology from uh, Europe to the U.S. just to test something, or there's a track in Singapore and so forth. So, you know, in some cases, we we are open to you know, 
know, collaborating on best practices and talking with these other facilities. But if you're in the uh, tech or business development side, we certainly want to attract international participation here. And there's a few reasons why you would come here versus work regionally is that you get a better understanding of the standards environment, of, sure. of the local rules and regulations and permitting, and you work in a global market. So we've had foreign companies come here solely for that purpose, because they, they want to, to better understand the local conditions here. And we have standards committees and things like that that we're looking at ways to allow people to engage. Um, sure. So business testing, we can give virtual tours of our facilities. So we are doing that already right now, where we can give okay. you the total virtual tour. Um, you can see everything before coming. We license, we, we are we have access to a technology from the University of Michigan. Um, uh, not formally announced, but I already told them I'm talking about it. But you know, they developed a contactless setup, a way to set up tests here. So even if you're not on site, you can literally script your tests and uh, essentially uh, with the graphical user interface, just set up your tests, set up all okay. the transportation networks, the sensors, the communication, and then we can go out there and do the turnkey test for you, right? So you don't even have to come here. We, you can hire us, we'll, we'll do your test for you. And that's another way that we'll allow that's people great. Done that they can't physically come here in person. So um, we so we dealing a lot with global the global uh, 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 ecosystem, and we'd love to see more people um, taking advantage and you know, schedule a virtual tour. We'll, we'll show you what we have. Perfect, love it. Great answers. Um, I will go off screen, and Devin will pop on to um, grab some questions that have been coming in from the audience. So I'll say goodbye for now, Ruben. Thanks so much, and Devin, if you want to join us. Absolutely. Thanks, Catherine. Uh, fantastic job uh, moderating that. And, and thanks again, Ruben, for joining us. Um, we did have a few questions uh, from the audience. Uh, so, you know, I think it was a pretty big announcement the last uh, week or so with the, the 60 mile corridor on uh, along Michigan Avenue. Ford was involved, U of M, the MEDC. Um, and so, are, is is ACM involved in that at all, or do they potentially see that as a place where they could get involved? Yeah, so ACM is was listed as a partner on that on that uh, announcement um, uh, with with uh, Sidewalk Infrastructure Partners, Cav, New Ford, University of Michigan, and uh, so we are part of that team, uh, and we we will be participating in that effort. Um, and um, the exact form of which, you know, we're still working out the details, but you can envision something like, you know finding best in class technologies, demonstrating them on a test facility, deploying them into a corridor, right? As a, just a one example of how we might participate uh, in that effort. Okay, great. Very exciting, I think for a lot of reasons. Um, I see this, yeah. We had, we had another question around, and I know obviously, you know, COVID has made things difficult, but um, are you, are, are, is there any ability for, um, vocational classes or high school classes or any kind of group visits or tours of ACM at the moment, or is that something that could potentially take place in the near future? Yeah, I mean, we are open. Uh, we are, uh, uh, and we're a, primarily an outdoor environment, right? So in many ways, ACM is, is, has the opportunity to have people on site, to do tours, um, to see the facility. Uh, we do tours already. We break people into smaller groups, right? We take whatever necessary precautions. But um, one of the advantages of being an outdoor facility is that you're not indoors. You can you can have um, uh, you can you can come on site and see the facility. Uh, in terms of other you know vocational training and things like that, we are actually thinking through um, our role in that space and the kinds of things that people could benefit from that we could at least initially do off site uh, and then eventually bring on site where people could come get some hands on experience with connected and automated vehicle technologies, practical training, and things of that nature. So. Okay, great. And they can reach out to to you or to the web yeah. uh, online. What's the best way to go about? Uh, yeah. yeah, send it to me and I'll forward you along. Um, Kevin uh, Kelly is our um, technical sales manager. He handles a lot of the virtual tours, getting people on site. Uh, but if you send it to me, I'll forward it along and it'll get to the right people. Uh, and we, we are encouraging as many people as possible. Come out and take a look at the site. Um, uh, you know, we, we, we actively show this on a regular basis. All right, fantastic. Um, and then just one more question in, in, in leaving is, is there any, is there a feature um, of ACM in, in the different testing that you find mo is most popular or most unique? Is there one that you kind of really like to, 
point out? Good question. I mean, the one that gets used, well, surprisingly, the garages are what people have the highest demand for. I mean, space is a is what a lot of autos are looking for. And uh, having a large uh, garage that has um, very high data transfer rates, um, fiber optics to, for, for handling the kinds of data you generate on a vehicle is, is important. And, and it's not your, your and my internet connection, right? These are these are transferring, you know, you know, potentially terabytes of data. So, but the on the track itself, um, the high-speed loop gets a lot of usage. Um, one because it's not just a paved oval track. Uh, it's it's got real road conditions. It's got you know grades. It's got uh, you can run at higher speeds, and it's got all the cracks and potholes and things you see in certain sections of the track. And so some of the other test facilities they can't do. So MCD doesn't have a high-speed section, for example. Uh, we do. So that gets used a lot. Uh, and then what we were told is that some of the other sections will also get used considerably. It's just the stage of development that car companies are at. Some of them are still just testing things out, right? So they just like that open space to just drive. Um, the DSRC uh, units are interesting in that we're doing some ourselves some clever uh, augmented reality things with them where you can drive a car around a track and we can spoof the car on the track to make it think that there's more cars around it, right? And so you get the benefit of like you're driving in traffic, but we're running a simulation and we're, we're you know, your car thinks it's in more traffic than it is. And, and we're, that's one of the other areas that we're continuing to advance is to try to come up with some very sophisticated augmented reality solutions, um, you know, to, to, to simulate a real world environment, but in the, in the closed test track. Got it. Awesome. I mean, we're we're excited to we're excited to have you here and uh, excited to uh, to see what's to come for for ACM. It's uh, it's very very interesting and a, a bright future. Thank you, Ruben, for for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. And if there are any of the questions, you can send them my way. I'll I'll get them to the right people. Sounds good. Thanks again. I'll also mention uh, now. Uh, this is this is going to be recorded. Um, so if there's anyone who's, who's watching or maybe joined late or had to jump off early, um, this will be recorded and you'll be able to access this uh, through uh, both the Chamber website and uh, and also um, Planet M website um, as well. So um, look forward to that. Now moving on to uh, to our next uh, our next segment, um, I had mentioned the the hand raise feature uh, early on. Uh, and so now we want to kind of get into the the networking portion of this um, and really it's an ability it's a, to kind of share out what you're working on what you're doing um, and introduce yourself to the group um, so you see you should see up on your screen um, how to do that if you if you use the the, the uh, hand raise feature we'll be able to call on you you can take them you can take a minute to kind of tell us who you are if you're looking to connect with anyone uh, whether it be Ruben or whether it be myself or whether it be just other uh, other attendees or other companies that are uh, that are on um, we're happy to give you that platform to do it um, so I don't see anybody yet why don't we um, if Len is around why don't we jump to to Len and he can talk about great. There. <laughs> so why don't we jump over to Len? Perfect. And Len, you can uh, you can talk about kind of this really interesting app feature that will allow us to continue the conversation and continue the networking after this event. And if you want to raise your hand, we'll come back. And if there's anyone who wants to speak, we'll take care of that too. Take awesome. Away, Len. Hey everybody, I'm Len Gogger. I'm with Connect Space. Thank you, Devin. Thank you everybody for the opportunity to talk about the mobility app. Um, through the Planet app. Um, to get into the app, this app you can use to actually connect with people, set up meetings, check out the other attendees that are, are, that are already part of this meetup, as well as um, go in and find out the certain things that companies may be looking for. So to get access to that, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna go to this link right here. I'm also gonna um, enter it into the chat later for everybody so that they can click on it. But once you click on the, the app icon or the app store icon i'm going to show it over here on the mobile side as well um, it'll take you right into the the specific way for you to get into the app once you get there you just go ahead download it um, you'll have the opportunity to either sign up for your account which is right there at the bottom over here or you can go ahead and log in i'm going to go ahead and log in 
since I already have my account already set up. Put my password in. Now, once you get into the app, you're gonna see the, the first thing that pops up for you is what are you providing and what are you seeking? This is your opportunity to add certain tags to what your company does. You have the ability to go ahead and search some of the popular ones or um, search all. Once you go ahead and you get those set up, even if you wanna skip it for right now and just get into the app, you'll come right to the home screen. On that home screen, you're gonna see this button right here or this, this icon here for the mobility meetup. You're gonna click on it. Once you get into it, you'll actually get to see the activity feed of some of the comments that people might put up there. We encourage all companies or organizations that are participating to maybe post a comment, say hello. Um, you can also see kind of some agenda information, but the important thing with this app that goes just beyond even today as part of the mobility meetup is those meetings. You can actually go in and find the people that are part of the mobility meetup, create meetings that are based on the things that you do or that they do. So um, if you know, you're providing a certain service, you can go in and put the service that you wanna try to provide them, or if you're seeking a service from an organization that you wanna meet with, you can go ahead and select one or multiple things. Once you do that, you can go in and find the individual that you want to actually have that meeting with. I'm going to click on Alex for today. Once you once you get through that part, all you have to do is put a title, a description, and a location. Um, and it's important to mention, like Devin said earlier, um, that you can actually do this before and after the event today. Um, so it gives you an opportunity to continue to reach out to other individuals that are part of this meetup that may not even made it to today, but have, have passed, uh, attended past meetups or future meetups. Going into the attendee section, you can actually see everybody that's part of this mobility meetup too. So I'm gonna go ahead to Alex again. Um, once I get into the, the profile of that individual, I can see what they're looking for. So if I wanna set up a meeting with someone or I wanna get a, 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 a connect with them, I can do that directly from here as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and slip, select on someone that I'm not connected to. Think of the connect piece as like that personal LinkedIn um, connection where you get to send them a nice message on why you want to meet with them and what, what's important about you being connected. Um, because once you actually send that request, you'll have the opportunity then to see other people, um, see those people, those, sorry, that individual's information. So once you're a connection, you'll have the opportunity to get their email address, their phone number, or even text them. Um, you can also send them a meeting request in here too, but it really gives you the opportunity to know more about the people that are part of the meetup, and, and you can really explore and learn about the opportunities that are there for you. And that's pretty much it. I'm gonna go ahead and put the, the link there to get you started um, for everybody, but that's it. Hey, Devin. Hey, Len, thanks. Great, uh, great presentation and a really great tool that I hope everybody uh, takes advantage of. Oh, absolutely. So we really hope that you do use that to continue to connect, to continue the conversation. Um, whether people are still eating their lunch or just a little bit shy, we don't have anybody who, uh, who's willing to speak up today. Um, well, actually, we have somebody, actually we do. Um, we have at least one person using the feature. Um, Bilal, it looks like. Uh, Bilal, uh, we'll go ahead and unmute you. We should be able to hear you. Bilal, are you there? Yes, hi, how you doing? Hi, great. Uh, go Thanks ahead. For the opportunity. Actually, I am shy, but I don't want you to be... Uh with no other uh, person. <laughs> so uh, thanks for this opportunity. My name is Bilal Hashwi, and uh, I'm from Zoom Ride. I think I'm gonna meet you today later also. Um, and uh, I'm one of the founders of Zoom Ride. We are a local ride share company, um, launching in about two weeks, based in Michigan, uh, in Dearborn. Uh, we're doing our soft launch the second week of September. It's not the best timing due to COVID, but after more than two years of hard work, we have to launch it. And I look forward to meeting you and uh, hopefully other uh, partners, uh, investors, customers. We focus on safety for the drivers and customers um, to protect them from 
many different things. Uh, we have at least 10 safety features that other rideshare companies don't have that we improved uh, the platform with. So thank you for the opportunity. That's great. And do you have a website that people can connect with you or? Actually, uh, we have a website, but it's called myzoomride.com. Uh, but uh, we're launching a new website next week. Uh, it's going to be the same name, but uh, it's going to be a more, up more, more upgraded one next week. All right, fantastic. So, yes, myzoomride.com. Myzoomride.com. Yes, sir. Awesome, Thank great. You. Look forward to it. We've got, uh, we've got another, um, another person who raised their hand, Brandon. Go ahead and unmute Brandon. Are you there? Hey, Devin, can you hear me? Hey, we can hear you. Great. Uh, yeah, so my name is Brandon Adcock, and I'm an engineer with Firestone Industrial Products. Uh, first, thanks to Planet M for uh, hosting the, the forum. It's good to be able to connect and learn about groups like HCM. So thanks, for, uh, thanks to Ruben for sharing. At FSIP, or Firestone Industrial Products, we're a division of Bridgestone, so the tire company. But what our division does is we design design and manufacture air springs for a number of OEMs, both in the passenger automotive and commercial vehicle markets globally. Um, right now, our focus is really into mobility solutions. So that'll involve further digitization, electrification of the air spring, involve making the air spring better connected. So right now, um, myself and, and FSIP, we're interested in learning about and connecting with any other groups or companies who are, who are uh, similarly focused or maybe have a complementary focus to, to that interest so um, or anyone who's just uh, interested in learning more about what we do so uh, I can uh, put my contact info in the chat window or I don't know how that should work why don't you why don't you go ahead and give us your email address and then you can put your contact info in the chat uh, box additionally yeah sure it's adcock brandon at fsip.com and uh, yeah, I'll put that in the chat window. All right, fantastic. All right, um, well, thanks. Uh, thanks to everyone who joined us. Uh, we did have a, a really good mix. I can see the attendees. I know not everybody can. I can see the attendees. So I, I see that we had a really good mix of individuals and companies from really all over, um, from the corporate side, from the startup side. So it's always great to have these events. Um, just a plug for our respective websites, planetm.com gives you all sorts of information, information about the landing zone and all sorts of uh, all sorts of stuff that Planet M is up to. Um, Mishauto.org, um, you can learn about the Chambers initiatives and the, uh, the Mishauto initiatives and what we're doing there. Um, so check out those websites. Uh, we look forward to connecting with everybody down the road and uh, look forward to hearing from you and seeing you and hearing you at our next mobility meetup. Look for information about that. Um, that will be coming soon. So take care, uh, have a great week and weekend, and I hope to talk to everyone soon. Thank you.